hard, it's time to get sawed. You and your squad better praise the real God. The Undertaker, but I'm good on fakers. When it comes to lyrics, I'm a freaky and sake up. So lay the mic down slow and careful. The line's fully loaded and I got another handful. I'm flipping and sipping and start ripping. Dabbing and dipping and giving punks a whipping. Just in case you want to go through rounds of soap, I'm down so that the clowns are no. Me getting burnt to hurt when we tolerate. I got rhymes with the hook. Forget it, I'm constipated. I'm Did you hear that shit? Uncle L, James Todd Smith, Mama said knock you out. I'm bad, I need a rep. Dave it, god damn it. I got rhymes up the hump, but get it, I'm constipated. That's a lot of goddamn rhymes. When they fuck with your digestion. Man, lyrics and bars. Lyrics and bars. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's comedian Ronnie Ray. It's the Ronnie Ray Show. Yeah. HBO, Netflix, Hulu. Like, man, we ain't give you nothing. You know what? My motto is. You know what my motto is, y'all? We ain't waiting out here. I ain't waiting for Jack. We doing it right now. This is the show. In my living room. We kicking it. We got reaction videos. We got we got podcast clips. We got sketches. We got we got everything. Ronnie Ray. Come on, man. Come on! Let's have some fun! <laughs> yeah! And who we got in the building today? Uh, T, uh, DJ Kirkland, you know, cousin of TK Kirkland, T to the motherfucking K. Oh, That's my right. cousin, man. Yeah. Uh, what does the DJ stand for? You uh, actually DJ or? No, I don't DJ at all. You know, like disc jockey and stuff. Like, no, that's not what I do. Um, DJ, my name means um, Dick Jabba. We mean Dick Jabba, Jabba in the vagina. Dick, Dick Jabba. That's what DJ stands for. So he's like a gigolo or something? Or? Something like that. If you act those bitches, yeah, I'm a gigolo. <laughs> uh, why do you gigolo? Because <laughs> they always say, do what you love and love what you do. So I love being with these women that got the pussy and... I love being inside the pussy, so why not be a guy who's inside the pussy? And I love money, so pussy and money is what I enjoy the most. How long you been doing being a gigolo? Man, eight years old was the genesis of my life. I was like, hey, we about to start. So, you know, I've been with a lot of motherfuckers. I've been with, like, like teachers and, you know, librarians. You know, I anything to get those books out. You know, I was doing my thing, and I had, like, some, you know, some of my friends, mothers, and aunties. So I just kept it going, you know. And um, I tried to change it up because, you know, it feels like you, you're letting your parents down when they say, oh, what you do? I ain't hey, mom, I'm out here getting this pussy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm going to try to go on the straight and narrow. So I try to do what my cousin TK did. You know, I tried to stand up, tried it for a minute. And you know what? I was hilarious. I, I was I was actually hilarious. I guess it runs in the family. But to be honest with you, it just didn't fill me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you got to do what you love and love what you do. So I'm like, I ain't really love that. You know, I thought it was cool. I got a standing ovation and everything, you know. Got me some groupie sex after the show. I'm like, you know what? I can do that without the jokes. You know what I mean? I can go get the girls without the jokes. So, you know, that's what I did. I said, this is the limit. He got the drones back there. I don't understand that. Like, I understand I'm in your apartment. You got a bike and you want to be in shape. But he got drones back there. Why you got drums? Like, is Sheila E coming and, and going to do a solo between the, the interview or something? She going to do Glamour's Life or Love Bazaar? I don't know. Like, why you got the drums back there if you watching this? Like, please tell me what the drums are for. Now, I was riding my car down the street. She called. I saw this ass. Let, let, let me just show you, Prez. Shit, look at this motherfucking ass, man. I'm on 79th the Cottage Grove and shit, man. Just riding. And I'm like, I got to show somebody this. So I'm going to the White House. And I'm like, I'm going to show um, Trump this shit. Yo, check this shit out, Trump. Look at that ass right there, man. Ain't nothing like Chicago booty, man. Nothing like Yo, what up, y'all? Me and Ryan right here. Getting it off my chest once again. If you know me, you know I'm from Chicago. And I'm a Bulls fan for life. Y'all probably looking at, what's your, what's your Bulls apparel? 
I don't know what Bulls Apparel from Chicago. See this white socks hat? You see these two guys on my shirt? You don't know who these guys are? Greatest movie of all time, man. Come on, man. If you didn't see it, so fucking what? Don't give a shit. I ain't even tell you the title if you don't know about it. But, man, I'm talking about Chicago Bulls today, man. Chicago Bulls, man. They making the playoffs this season. They are making the playoffs this season. They have not made it in five years. Not since Dwayne Wade graced us with his talent. In 2016. Oh, did I mention I played Dwayne Wade's daddy in the Get It Ready commercial? Stop. Get the car out the shop. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's beside the point. Anyway, we and Dwayne left, came, took Bulls 20 something million dollars. Like, I'm out of here. I made my three. I don't need y'all. Like, Dwayne, I was a little mad at you at first, but then, you know, Show redemption at the end of your career. But we're not talking about you, Dwayne. We're talking about the Chicago book. Tired of, sick and tired of your critics, man. They're not going to make it. They might make the play-in tournament. But LeBron, now, every day I got to hear LeBron, now, uh, 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 KD, uh, uh, Irving won't get uh, vaccinated. They don't give a fuck. It's about the books. You see the moves they made this year? The Rosen ball? Come on, y'all. Zach Levine is the beast. Patrick Williams is coming. Stephen A. Smith. Shannon Sharp. Skip Bayless. Max Kellerman got five since the last time we talked. But those three dudes, they doubt in my squad. I don't appreciate that. What's his name? Oh, Zach Lowe on NBA Jump. I don't know. They, they haven't proved it to me. Who are you? You ain't even play basketball. How you talking shit? They got one of the best starting fives in, this, in the damn league. And you talking about they're going to get the play in? Come on, man. I guarantee. I'm putting it on the line right now. On the line right now. 52 and 30. 52 and 30. Mark my words. Come back to this video at the end of the season. Like, man, he was right. I don't know how you get that. You don't know comedians are psychic. We got damn psychics, man. And I didn't think I even say this. I ain't getting props. To my man, I ain't like him at first, but I gave props to him, man. Kenji Perkins, yeah, they they gonna uh, yeah, but the Chicago Bulls are gonna show some people. So watch, 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 leaving a watch. He like, yo, he on my team this day. Other than that, LeBron over Jordan shit, I kind of like you a little bit, Perkins, because you're seeing the light. Because I'm guaranteed, 52 and 30, 52 and 30, fifth or fourth in the East this year, playoff bound. I'm not saying they're going to win a championship, but they might because, you know, all this drama in the East, at least they can go, you know what I'm saying? Because the East, you know, Kyrie Irving ain't taking the, taking the shot. He's super stubborn. He ain't doing it. He's not going to take the shot. Speaking of shots, Ben, ben Simmons ain't going to learn how to shoot that quick, so he ain't going to be no goddamn well. Uh, who else? Uh, who, 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 no matter. That's it. That was a oh, wait, oh, Greek freak, but hopefully something happened to him. Hopefully they just they, somebody get injured. I'm not not wish the pain on nobody. But you know, uh, I rather see Chicago in there than Milwaukee. No disrespect to my family in Milwaukee. Y'all had y'all good times last year, and that was cool. But we wanted back. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan, 30 to 20 damn years ago. It's time for us to get back, man. So Zach, Alonzo, Bill Rosen, Vucevic, Kobe. Kobe White, get us back to the playoffs and make it look good for us, man. I'm not saying they got to win the championship, but just make it look good, man. I'm tired of being a laughing stock. I watch y'all play with the bullshit since I moved back to Chicago, and they haven't done shit. So I'm like, I need y'all to win some shit. I've been watching. I've been canceling dates and missing comedy shows to watch y'all lose by 30 damn points. Um, it's humiliating, man, but I'm loyal. I'm loyal. I'm a Bulls fan for life. So we can it in this year. 52 and 30. Playoff bound. Bulls in flight. See red, boy. Oh, nigga, you gotta tell. Put this on here. I don't give a fuck. I told my aunt the story. <laughs> Let the world know when you first saw Beyonce in person. Oh, man. Yeah, man, I was at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in Hollywood on Sunset and Gower. And it was when that, uh, it was when that song was out. I'm a survivor. Right. That's um so I'm not I'm 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 outside the restaurant waiting to be seated. And I and I'm facing my boy in a conversation, right? And so the way I'm standing, my back is to the door and my boy can see the see over my shoulder, he can see everybody coming out, but I'm facing him so I can't see I can't see shit, right? Uh -huh. So we talking and shit 
And as we're talking, his eyes light up, and I follow his eyes, and and there stood Beyonce. She was standing outside of Roscoe's by herself for like a for like a small moment in time. So you know that my my inner you know player kicked in, and um, at the time it was when two ways were popular. I had like a little blue see through two way. So I pulled out my two way, and I kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hell no. Yeah, I kind of assumed that, uh, you know, that she was sitting there waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, as I'm standing there looking, um, the other girls in the group, Kelly and the two other insignificant bitches, walk out here. <laughs> yeah, they, walk, they walk out, right? Okay. And so the limo pulls up. And um, I'm still sitting there. As they walk away, I hear Kelly say, damn, girl, he's kind of cute, right? And Beyonce still didn't say nothing. And I'm sitting there quiet. They all walk, they all walk and hop in the limo, and the door shuts. And when the door shut, the sound of the door shutting, like, what, snaps me out of my little trance and shit. So, so I run over to the limo, and I gesture for them to uh, roll the window down, right? So now I'm nervous, but I'm still, I'm still trying to keep it cool, and I didn't know what to say, right? Right. And so, so the limo starts to drive off, and the window is down, and I'm kind of jogging next to it. And this is the only shit I can think to say. And the guys, the limo's pulling off. I say this. I say, uh, do any of your bitches like bowling? <laughs> <laughs> That's classic shit. Fuck my shit all the way off, man. <laughs> That's fucking acting. They have no respect. They don't care about this country at all. All they do is sit on their butt and complain. And what do they have to complain about? It's because of them and their quotas that I'm not in the Ivy League, where I belong. Look, you all had quotas for centuries. You called them legacies, restricted country clubs, the law. Oh, hey, my grandfather came to this country with nothing. He couldn't even speak the language. But he worked hard, and he made a place for himself and his family. Now, why can't you people do the same? Hey, my grandfather built this country, man. He fought wars for it. And most places he went wouldn't let him sit down and get a cup of coffee. I can't even catch a cab in New York. You know, it doesn't matter how many degrees I get. All you people see is color. Your grandfather was an immigrant. You're American. My grandfather was born here, Duke. And you people still look at me as just another nigger. That's fucking acting! Kadeem? Kadeem! He should have got a fucking Emmy for that shit. That's acting, bro. Damn, do you feel that shit? I've seen this fuck almost 30 fucking years ago. And it's still fucking affects me. Ah. Oh, this shit was a comedy. It's fucking acting. Did this man a job. Honorary Emmy something. From that scene by itself, that's acting. Damn it. I'm a man, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a man. Cause that's facts. That's facts. Damn. Shit still ain't changed that much, man. Shout out to Kadeem Hardison, man. Big fan of you, brother. Always my favorite scene. I said if I see you on the street, I was just gonna die saying that monologue. My grandfather built this good. You should have you should have Amy for that one, man. No bullshit. That's acting. Out here in Africa, I like to dance in my draws, dance in my draws, dance in my draws, dance in my draws. Yo, I like to dance in my draws, dance in my draws. What up, y'all? Yes, we're live at the Lincoln Lodge. I'm here with my comedy friends. This is comedians who love comedy podcasts. Exclusive, my man. James Fisher, Junior, Mars Timms, John McCombs, I'm Ronnie Ray. We're here talking about, we're going to play a quick game called Host Feature Headline. Me and you, I'm going to give you three comments you put them in position. That's the host, the feature, or the headline. Y'all ready? All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. First one is uh, Carlin. George Carlin. Okay. 
Bill Cosby before the rape. <laughs> wait, wait. It's, Specific it's, Cosby. Wait, are we putting Bill Cosby before the rape in host feature or headline? Yes, yes. Or, yeah. or is George Carlin the... No, George Carlin is a part of the three. So you got to okay. put them in order. Okay, so it's Carlin. So we got George Carlin. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Richard Pryor. Oh, shit. Where do they go? Who will host the show? Jane. I, I... All right, I'm gonna say Cosby open. All right, he's the host. Yeah, he's he's the host. All right, he's the host. Just cause he can, he can like captivate the audience, but he's not gonna have them like dying laughing. But he can captivate them and get them in and be like, all right, he can set the stage well. Then I'm gonna have Carlin open. He's because me personally, I think Carlin he was very profound. Everything he said always made me go, oh, oh, damn. But there was some stuff in his later years where I was just like. This is very insightful. I have not laughed once, but I'm enjoying <laughs> myself. I just watched two specials. Guess what I'm just, saying? Like, damn, made me think more than laugh. Though, but he's great. And then, and then, but like he's gonna get people's brains moving and stuff. And then after that, hit him with that prior at the end. Hit him with the drug stories. Hit him with. The, and I would like resurrect if we could resurrect Richard Pryor. <laughs> resurrect it, Richard Pryor, because I want to hear the drug stories. I want to hear the stories about him dying. Why he was having an orgasm? I want to hear what heaven or hell is like. That's what. I, and you I got feel like to resurrect Carlin it's kinda, too. It's kind of fucked up that the, the rapist is still alive. <laughs> 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 hey, what do you think? Hey, evil, evil people live forever. Oh uh, yeah. In the movie, Mars Hill. What do you think? Oh, uh, feature headline. Well, it's it's uh, I'm going in the same order that James is going uh, because. Uh, a lot of times, if you're a, 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 a not this, I want to say Pryor's a dirty comic, but if you're a comic that is so profound like Richard Pryor, you want someone clean to open up for you. And, and Cosby, I think, would be great. He's clean. He gets the audience calm and mellow, in the mood for comedy with his stories. Mm. Then you go with Carlin because uh, it's it's a, it, because of the dynamic between his style versus Richard Pryor's style. I mean, yeah, they can both get dirty, they can both get blue, but very cerebral with, with Carlin. He he is that, uh, he's the filling on your Oreo cookie, basically, mm -hmm. uh, be before you get to Richard Pryor, who is just amazing with his, his, his character work, uh, with with the uh, the topics that he touches on. You're not, you're not, following Richard Pryor. So right. I'm absolutely going Cosby hosting. Uh, your feature is George Carlin, and your <clears throat> headliner is Richard Pryor. And I, I just realized we are putting them in the order that a comedy show. Put the most offensive nigga last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. The least offensive one part first yeah. so people can stay. Because the kind of you offensive can turn, one. You, you can yes. turn some people off right there at the beginning. Uh, they yeah, don't want to nah, sit you, around. Yeah. And then you, and you don't go uh, nasty to clean. Once you've heard shit, fuck these motherfuckers, y'all niggas is up in here wilding and shit, you can't then go to Bill Cosby who's like, and then my wife Camille was, was like, nobody want to hear that shit. I'll, hey, I took a shower. I went from nasty to clean. So <laughs> it works in certain circles. Okay, circumstances. yeah. John McCall. I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. I'm going to put Pryor as the host. Oh. I'm going to put Pryor as the host. Switch a room. Yes, because remember when he had the special when he started and people were still finding their seats? He has that skill. He yeah, has that yeah. skill to be like, to just rip, to rip and have it fucking kill. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this as I'm recording a special. Okay. That kind of confidence to still get people, you know, who are still getting to their seats, getting their drinks, and still killing that environment. I think he's your host. Um, feature, you know, it's hard because I'm thinking like, how do you, how's Pryor set up the next guy? But I'm thinking. <laughs> This nigga done did a lot of stuff. Y'all find out who he is. Give it up for Cosby. He talks shit to me, and he, and he you, you don't fuck with him, but he fucks with you while you're sleeping. Oh, your Bill Cosby. Your jello pop eating motherfucker. Chill out on the Bill Cosby rape. <laughs> no, man. I'm going to go with George Carlin as your feature. I'm going to go with George Carlin as your feature. You know, I, I, I think he's... I don't know. I think he's he's not. He can't not like seize the attention like Cosby, because Carlin's still a guy who like walks around. And so Cosby sits down, 
he takes his time. You know, he's got he's 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 confident in himself in that way. So I think that, that he, Cosby after the rape though to sit down. Cosby before the rape was a walk. Let's, 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 let's just be clear. Let's just be clear. Let's be clear. Very animated. Let's, Cosby super let's, animated. Let's, let's, he is. Let's be very yeah. clear though. There was no before. He was. I'm talking, about, I'm talking yeah. about like <laughs> like that and shit. Like I mean, but like he can he can do stuff just with his face alone. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll make you laugh. And Colin doesn't have that skill. No. So I say. Uh, yeah, that's what I say. Fryer, host, Colin Feature, Cosby Headline. All right. Well, it's my turn then. Uh, I'm going to go Colin as the host. Uh, okay. Just because he comes out with it and it's like, all right, you at this tone, this is what's going to happen. Even when Bill gonna, Bill's going to feature because he's going to slow the shit down. Colin will bring it back up and Richard Pryor can talk about all the drugs and prostitution and his mom and shit. I'm going that. So I'm going... Carlin, Kyle, <clears throat> Pryor. Okay. Yeah. Real simple. What do you think, people? Huh? Leave a goddamn comment. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and then, fuck, marry, kill. Would you, which one would you fuck? Which one would you marry? And right. which one would you kill? Right. This Richard game Pryor is what you mean. We're trying to stop the rape jokes. Yes, oh, so right. still talking about that shit. It's Cosby, 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 because he has the most experience. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some shit today. Hold up. I gotta play this shit. I've never heard this before. This shit came out in uh, 96. And the name of this song is Girl, Let Me Come in Your Mouth. Record deal! It's people singing in churches right now. <laughs> Parents are beating their ass. They seem better than Pavarotti, and this motherfucker gets. I don't want to. And it's the, it's the best of. It's called the Anothology. Not the Anthology, the Anothology. He got other classes too. Shit, how they sell this? <laughs> How the fuck they sell this shit? <laughs> that's what pussy is made of. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's listen to that's what pussy is made for. When you were coming, you built just like a star. And now you found out what your pussy is made for. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the song. <laughs> that's what your pussy is made for. <laughs> This is the greatest hit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has that shit in here, right? <laughs> the best of blowfish. I will sing in my funeral, shit. <laughs> we got this favorite song. Put that name up. Who was this guy? God damn it. <laughs> Too fat to fuck. I heard that one. I listened to that one. One more song, though. I'm so sorry, but I gotta do this. Hey, pops, move me and shit, shit. Get to the lyrics, baby. Right at the top. We don't need to hear no more from Blue. Oh man, <laughs> he pissed all his family off. <laughs> I'm gonna be a single watch. They gonna be shit. Don't sell too fast, fuck. Nobody wanna hear that shit. He had the album release where I told you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Come on, stay single, too fast, fuck. Show's over. Yeah, but before I go, you always gotta drop the dope quote of the week. Shout out to Jerry Springer for this segment. Because he always had the final word. All the chaos was going on. And then like, final word. Prostitutes and, and, and short people marrying tall people. But in the end, final word is this. I always like that part. So I'm going to go on. This is, this is for Jerry Springer. Don't, don't quote of the week. From the man. The icon. The man created Jeet Kune Do. Sifu. Bruce Lee. Yeah, that's right. Y'all ain't think I knew that, right? He died a year before I was born, but I know some Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee said this. The hell with circumstances. Create your own opportunity. Shit. Come on, man. That's exactly what I'm doing here, because I ain't waiting for y'all. I ain't waiting for y'all. 
Create your own opportunity. Because in the end, you'll be satisfied in your head. Create your own opportunity. Don't wait for nobody, man. Just like UDC, INC. We ain't wait. Next time. Yeah.